So if you take nothing else from this training today, I want to offer you these three simple words. And this is a core tenet of health, of happiness. And it's simply... It's my honor to introduce you to Ashley Turner. Ashley Turner is a yoga and meditation instructor, psychotherapist, and writer. She's the founder of Yoga Psychology, an innovative training program for teachers and dedicated students fusing yoga, depth psychology, mindfulness, and neuroscience. She's the co-founder of Urban Priestess, a modern-day mystery school for women creator of nine best-selling yoga DVDs, and co-author of Aroma Yoga. She works with therapy and coaching clients via Skype and leads transformative events around the world. Ashley, welcome to the Psychotherapy and Spirituality Summit. I'm so glad you could be a presenter in this series. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. Truly, truly humbled to be here with you. Thank you, Tammy, and the whole Sounds True team. It's interesting. People often ask me, what is yoga psychology? And it's a really interesting question for me because yoga is a psychology. And the word psyche itself actually comes from Greek word meaning um, life, meaning breath, which is a really interesting connotation that I'll talk about in just a second. But it also means psyche translates to mean soul. It translates to mean self. And so psychology is a study of self or a study of the soul and so yoga is the whole umbrella system of yoga of course is a vast vast system many different approaches and schools of yoga of how to study what is the nature of self what is the nature of life and how do we optimize this experience of being a human being of having a physical body mental body emotional body and spiritual body and so the whole of yoga really is a science of self and a science of soul. Interestingly, the word psyche does have this um, etymology connected with the word breath. And so the breath is really paramount. It is the through line in yoga psychology. It is the through line of the mind-body connection of really tuning us in to our higher self, tuning us into this soul energy. Um, also, physiologically, the breath has a lot of um, really the gateway connecting the inseparability of mind-body. So I would really encourage you all as we go through this presentation to begin to conceive of yourself. You know, we hear a lot about mind-body medicine, mind-body therapy, um, mind-body wellness. And even that still is holding the duality of separation. And so I really encourage you to start conceiving of your experience as a unified field. It's not separate mind-body. So um, the practice of yoga is to understand ourselves as this yoking, as this unification, inseparability of self, which translates bridges both through the mental experience, the psychological experience, and into our somatic experience and our physical body. So the breath is really this bridge, and when you look at the physiology of what is mind-body medicine or mind-body psychology, the breath is bridging in the nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today and really present is the yogic model of self, which is the five layers or the five sheaths, which are called the koshas in Sanskrit. And we're going to go into detail into each one of the koshas, of the five koshas, and then specific strategies that we can use, both from a larger lifestyle consideration standpoint, from a yogic standpoint, and then from a more Western, modern psychological standpoint, specific strategies to address these five different koshas or layers of self. Um, but one of the key foundational, uh, really, 
cornerstones of the practice physiologically is the nervous system and understanding the orchestration of the nervous system of working with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system being the part of our nervous system that is sympathetic to the outside stimuli that's responding and reacting to outer stimuli. And so that's where our fight or flight response lives and we have an experience, we cognize it, we then form a thought around it, a feeling around it, and then a physical reaction based on those thoughts and emotions. And that's where the fight or flight comes in and a whole host of um, you know, biochemical reactions. And then we have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxation response, the rest and digest response. So our breath bridges. Our breath is one of the only, maybe the only function in the body that has the ability to move both on an autonomic level, the just automated response, we're breathing, we don't think about it, we automatically breathe to stay alive, like our digestion is automatic. And it also can be consciously controlled. So as soon as we apply mindfulness, attention to the breath, we can start to shift the body into a different physiological response. So if you take nothing else from this training today, I want to offer you these three simple words, and this is a core tenant of health, of happiness, and it's simply follow your breath. And so I want to offer you these three words in the tradition of psyche, in the tradition of breath, in the power of breath to transform our lives, in the power of breath to transform our minds and certainly our bodies. Follow your breath. And each one of these is very important. Each one of these words is distinct. And the first is follow. And the reason is you're not seeking your breath. You're not trying to control your breath. You're just simply following. So it implies that you're in a receptive state and the breath is leading you. In other words, from um, this slide that we have here, psyche or the soul is leading you. You're following it. The second word is your in other words, follow your breath, that each one of us has um, our own medicine. Each one of us has our own um, perfect attributes and the faculties within us to heal ourselves. So follow your breath. It's not follow your teacher's breath or follow your partner's breath or follow your child's breath. Follow your breath. And the third word, breath, it's follow your breath. It's not even follow your heart. It's not follow your mind, certainly. Um, it's not follow your body. But the breath implies this part of us that's the most spacious, the most undifferentiated, um, the most essential nature of who we are. The first thing that we do when we come into this body is take a breath, inhale. And the last thing that we do when we leave this body is to exhale. And so whatever way we come to understand our relationship to the breath, the breath is our relationship to life in this human form, in this body. And as soon as we place our attention on our breath, we're placing our attention on that Ananda Maya Kosha, that soul energy, the self energy, the psyche. So really encourage you as we go through this presentation to just keep following your breath and staying with your breath. So um, we can go ahead and move to the next slide, and I'll just orient you to these five layers of self, the five koshas. And then we'll do a little breath practice after this just to have an experiential moment of these five layers. So perhaps you're familiar in the yoga tradition with the five koshas. This is um, a very basic model of orienting to what it is, again, to have this human experience. And the reason that I love this map to use is because it helps us to create a neutrality in our experience and just understand the context of what we're working with. Um, traditional psychotherapy, Western psychotherapy, was very much based on the Descartian, again, mind-body split and Cartesian split um, of the I think, therefore I am. And so much of our traditional Western psychological models were based on understanding just the mental faculties, the mind, the thinking process, um, the different dynamics of mind, conscious, unconscious. And until 
you know, the last maybe several decades, the body wasn't brought online so much and our spiritual nature wasn't brought online. And so the practice of yoga and yoga psychology, one of its um, highest attributes is that it is a very holistic model of looking at us as spiritual beings, of completely addressing the spiritual essence and, and challenges and um, existential crisis that we experience, but also addressing our physiology. So we have here the first layer, the outer layer there, you see the white layer in this bullseye is Anamaya Kosha. And we're gonna go into all of these much more in depth. Anamaya Kosha is the physical body. Everything you can touch, taste, feel in your own physical body, externally, your internal sensations, all of your systems. These are going from the grossest, um, most tangible layer to the more subtle layers. The second layer, the second kosha, um, kosha also translates to mean sheath. And so you can think of these almost transparent sheaths or coverings. They're covering each other. So the next layer, you have the yellow layer there, is the energetic or the pranic body, prana maya kosha. Interestingly, each of these are named um, with the word maya, and the word maya means um, illusion. That's one translation in Sanskrit. And so it's, it's, it's actually denoting that each one of these layers is a covering, a sheath that's somewhat of an illusion. And so we're trying to get into the bullseye, into the essence of who we are, and we have these outer sheaths or layers. The third layer the mental emotional body, that bright sort of neon green there, manomaya kosha. And this comes from the root word in Sanskrit, manas. Manas means mind, um, the mind stuff. Uh, and so manomaya kosha refers to all of our mind stuff, our mental processes, our emotional body, our personality. And we'll talk more about this in just a second. The fourth layer there, the dark green, is Vigyana Maya Kosha. And Vigyana Maya Kosha, um, the word Gyana in yoga means wisdom. And so this is an interesting distillation in yoga psychology is that we are moving, we recognize a difference between the mental emotional layer and then the more discerning wisdom mind, the much more subtle aspect of wisdom mind, of the Gyana or Yana Yoga. So that's the dark green layer there. And then the essence is the spiritual body, this Ananda Maya Kosha. And the word Ananda in Sanskrit translates to mean bliss. So that bullseye that you see in the center, that red bullseye, is this essential nature. Our many, many words that all different traditions have used to describe this. Here it's described as bliss. You might describe it as universal energy, spirit, love, God, goddess, um, but the essence of who you are. And so the concept of the koshas is that at the core, we have this essential nature. And then as we move outward, these layers begin to cover. And the work, the practices of yoga psychology, of which there are many different approaches in schools, Every time we do a practice, every time we get on our mat, every time we sit on our meditation cushion, we sit with our psychotherapist or a teacher, a great teacher, we're beginning to perforate through these layers and penetrate through these layers so we have a little bit more access to that light that's shining from that Ananda Maya Kosha. And we'll talk about this a little more in just a second. And this is just another version, sort of rainbow version of the five layers. Again, you have that outer layer of Anamaya in red, Pranamaya in orange, Manamaya, Vijnanamaya. And then at the core, inside of Ananda Maya is this very um, important concept in yoga psychology, this circle called the Atman. And the Atman in yoga psychology and yoga means the soul or the self. Um, and so we have these four different functions of mind and aspects of mind, but the Atman really permeates all. And the Atman is the individualized version, this unique individual human self that is connected to the larger Brahman. So I like to think of the analogy here of spirit or universal consciousness is like the great ocean of consciousness. 
And I live literally right next to the Pacific Ocean that I walk on every day. And so when you look out onto the ocean and you see these zillions of molecules of water. And so the ocean itself, the essence of the ocean is the same essence as one molecule of water. That one molecule of H2O holds the same properties, the same um, faculties as the entire ocean, right? The same substance. And in this way, the Atman is the individual human self is like one molecule of the whole ocean of consciousness. And so when we are plugging in and orienting and identifying with Atman, with that soul energy of who we are, we are then tapping into that larger motherboard or that larger ocean of consciousness. And looking at this image here, so much of our work in human life is to understand how to work through these outer five layers that are covering the sheaths that are covering this Atman. And how do we learn to optimize the physical body, the pranic body, the mental, emotional body, the wisdom mind, so that we have more access and we naturally orient and identify more with the Atman. So this is the practice of what we're going to dive into a little more right now. Mm -hmm.